Hello. Okay, so the recording has started, and I'll take us through. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, so if you're new around here, Arian, uh, uh, it's often traditional, <coughs> although you don't have to do it. Uh, just say hi, who you are, and uh, you know, just introduce yourself. Uh, if you'd like to do that, you know, you're free to do that now. Um, otherwise, we can move on. Um, um, I just write it in chat because of the background noise. Right. Okay. 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 Fantastic. Okay. Uh, so uh, the uh, next thing on the agenda is usually uh, announcements. Um, uh, I forgot to put the announcement there, which is <coughs> uh, PyScript version. 2024 10.2 was released yesterday uh, so go look at the release notes they've been posted in our discord channel um uh and uh, we continue to make progress uh which is a good thing um <clears throat> thank you andrea i can see him editing the <laughs> retroactively the uh the the uh, agenda document um so as usual uh andrea and i are just going to talk about um, what we're up to um, and have been up to and so apart from the release and things related to the release uh, I've been working on uh, excuse me the um, at when decorator and uh, how we handle asynchronous things as well and I've put an item in the agenda items just to talk through uh, the progress so far uh, Andrea what have you been up to matey uh, okay so this is upcoming work priorities, which is my current focus. But otherwise, um, I put in agenda items what I've done recently, which is better index DB test or better in general test when it comes to you need a reload to understand that tests are working, yeah. which is probably one of the main reason I wrote a lot of tests manually is because I need to refresh, check the cache uh, out of DevTools um, tabs and, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it, it looks like with Playwright, we can just reload the page and somehow check the cache and stuff that, that works already. And so um, I can show a, the... The, the, the little changes that we need to use when we write integration tests. Um, and then I've been working on index URLs. But right now I'm talking about my agenda items and probably I should, I should have put that yeah. in the upcoming work priorities because the upcoming work or priorities, and I don't know if that should be a priority in my case, is about deprecated dependencies and I can quickly share my screen to show that it's going to take one minute literally uh, if, if that's okay with you yeah go for it okay uh so when you fresh install um PyScript dependencies um the very first time you will see two things one is that some dependencies is using another dependency that makes no sense anymore in the modern JavaScript language. And because we we bundle everything in PyScript, I think the sooner we get rid of deprecated and not useful anymore dependencies, the better. And at the same time, we are using Xterm, which is kind of a crucial, I would say, or a critical dependency we have because everything based on terminal attribute is based on extern. And so uh, it's been, a, I wouldn't say a long time, but it's been quite some time that I'm noticing that a fresh install of extern is uh, complaining that extern is now deprecated <laughs> because they moved into uh, a new at xterm xterm instead. Um, I never took a time to uh, dig into what's changed in there, but I think <laughs> the sooner we move and we, we, we are sure that our stuff works with the most recent version of xterm, the, the better, because of course we want to provide the best um, developer experience uh, out there and we want to provide the latest 
package whatever we are landing in there with PyScript which is already um, a super uh, um, modern stack we want to land the most modern stack we can and probably and so what I'm doing right now is trying to understand how many things will break by using the X term X term instead of the previous X term um, and I'm investigating that so this is my upcoming work I want to be sure by the end of this week or maybe tomorrow <laughs> that uh, X term uh, the latest the greatest works as expected and that's it fantastic fantastic okay so um we'll move on to the agenda items for discussion unless anyone else wants to tell us what they've been up to or what they're going to be doing um, when it comes to PyScript related things um... well the, uh, I think the past couple of weeks have been more PyScript related than a lot of the previous months and gave a couple of talks around PyScript and whatnot or at least PyScript carbon inside a keynote and stuff yeah. carved inside a keynote uh, a lot of enthusiasm as usual and stuff um, and um, a lot of the recent features in PyScript slash also PyScript.com were really cool to use just you know kudos to everyone working on them that uh, really cool um, and I'll add a couple of items that came out on those conversations and stuff uh, because I've just basically very focused on uh, one of them. I just already told um, Nicholas, we talked really quick around docs and eventually, you know, um, language translations. Um, and because we're kind of mature, I think I opened a Jira. Yes, uh, uh, yes I saw that. Uh, GitHub. To not get a Jira. A GitHub. <laughs> <laughs> my, yeah, my brain is a little fried. Yeah. Um, and then the other one was a lot of folks asking, hey, where can I help and stuff like this? And um you know i don't think and maybe it's me but but maybe it's me i don't have i didn't have visibility in the last few months uh you know i don't think we have a clear uh visual cue on what are the the easiest tasks or, or what are the tasks that people can start trying you know helping with even without too much knowledge of the code base and whatnot so but i'll, I'll open those as a yeah, yeah, yeah. agenda items yeah <clears throat> i mean we've tidied up the repo and blah 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 so it's very clear also what's a javascript contribution and what's a python kind of contribution and where you go and do those things but you're quite right we need to kind of signpost those a bit more and you know uh, i guess next time we have to go to a conference sprint we could put some you know beginner friendly um, items that folks could, you know, cut their teeth on, as it were, just to just to figure it out. But of course, what we don't want is. I, I've been talking to Russell recently, and he talks about flyby contributors who turn up, produce this pull request that's an absolute mess, but it takes you three hours to work through the pull request, only to realise it is an absolute mess, and they never fix any of the things anyway. So you've just wasted a whole day of your time, and thank you very much. You should have been doing something else. So it's, there's a kind of a um, we, we've, we've got to kind of be very, very careful. Uh, plus, the, if you're doing the, you know, a lot of what we're doing, this is a really interesting problem is basically what I'm saying. I'm going to shut up because uh, we'll, we'll be here all afternoon. Uh, Andrea. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I kind of fully agree with what you just said. But at the same time, for instance, in the agenda item, <laughs> there is um, index underscore URLs that was uh, proposed yeah. a while ago. And it, it's a bug that has been around for a while. And the, the bug was meant to be solved upstream, downstream. Who who cares at the end of the day? You know, users just want the feature to land. And, and I managed to make it land recently, today, um actually it's not it's not merged yet but <laughs> the feature work mm -hmm. um I, I i just will say i still encourage people to file merge requests because oh, i'm saying oh i'm not saying they, don't do it but i'm saying yeah. we need to i, I think what I'm, I'm agreeing with fabio in that we have to manage expectations around uh yeah exactly uh, exactly but uh, so sometimes people think they so this this example with the uh, index underscore urls was a perfect example because the merge request is completely useless for the project mm -hmm. but it opened 
uh, a lot of discussions around what we should do, how we should do it, and all that kind of stuff. And so at the end of the day, it, it kind of worked yeah. as a merger quest that it will be closed as it is because it's meaningful, m meaningless. But um, it was a, a he opened room for discussions and uh, all of you participated somehow. So it, it was great. And uh, yeah, the, all, all I'm saying is that the message should be, if you feel like filing a merger quest, think twice, maybe open a discussion first, maybe open an issue first. But if you really want to file a merge request, I think that's still, that's still fine yeah, to yeah. me. Uh, I, 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 I'm speaking personally. It's, it's like it, it can be uh, uh, an, um, an open point of discussion. Yeah. And um, also, it might expose ahead of time what users are expecting from the whatever change we're making. So yeah. I think it's, so, it's so, okay. So that, in, in my experience, with, for instance, the Mew editor, um, we had somebody turn up and he, <laughs> A, the PR was like thousands of lines of code change. Okay. Yeah, that, that would be. He made, more, a, yeah. he made a fundamental change in the way the Adafruit mode in Mew worked without even consulting with the Adafruit folks, if you see what I mean. And, uh, yeah, I, and that... I worked closely with these people to make sure that they had all the things that they needed. He was just, he just wanted it to work in his very special way. Um, and in the end, you know, we jumped on a call and we, we, we just had to drop the PR and we we put in our readme after that in big bold letters, you know, before you submit a PR, please create a discussion just so that we can see that this is coming and we can talk about things and manage expectations. I mean, I don't, you see, I, I just don't want people to waste their time, for instance, like that, that fella clearly did. Yeah, and we don't ourselves to waste our time yeah, yeah, too. Exactly. So, but yeah, 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 I think yeah, like in everything, there is a, a line to draw. Yeah, right? yeah, so balance, if it? you want to change uh, <laughs> uh, the core dependencies around, I don't know, the the way we load Pyodide, uh, that that's not gonna work. Yeah, we yeah. need a discussion first. Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, um, and I'm and I'm sorry that our people spending time to file not in our case in general in the open source space. Yeah. I'm sorry people are spending a lot of time to file a huge merge request without even having a discussion because that's I I, I think that never worked in general. Yeah. But when it comes to little change, it's like hey, I'm expecting this, and sometimes I, I mean I I wouldn't discourage anyone to file a, um, a merge request out of the box, but at the same time, the, the approach usually is discuss this yeah. and then uh, we, we find an, uh, 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 an agreement, uh, consensus, whatever, and yeah. then we move forward. So all I wanted to say is that some, sometimes not everyone follows that approach, but filing a huge merge request, yeah, that that's not gonna work if it's, if there's no discussion up front. Yeah. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're right. There is a line to draw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, it, it get, it's yeah. just all about managing expectations. Okay, I'm gonna move yeah. on to the agenda items now, um, and oh, I love it. I put mine down first, and then Andreas put one on top of that, and then Fabio's. Put yeah, because it's gonna be quick. <laughs> it's gonna be quick. It's gonna be it's quick. Gonna be quick. Okay, the floor's yours, Andrea. Yeah. Come on, let us let us see what your uh, yours is. A better index DB tests plus index URLs. Y yeah, hopefully, hopefully <laughs> it's gonna be quick. Unless yeah. uh, a lot of questions are asked. Uh, hopefully, no. So, um, well, the first thing was. Um, I probably, I've probably been a bit lazy. I don't know, but I never thought, so the reason I wrote a lot of manual tests is because I thought I want to check, like I, like I previously mentioned, I want to check the, my app tool tab and blah, 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 and see that stuff is working. Uh, at the same time, there are better ways to do that. Uh, my integration test and people expect us to have better integration tests too. So in this case, um what i never wrote before it was a page reload which i've recently learned that it doesn't invalidate the cache because to me playwright every time starts with a new browser new tab new whatever and and i always expected that to 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 always have a, a fresh new environment but that was my bad understanding of what it does because there is this dot reload which just works 
wonderfully. So if I have some expectation about the test, and this was the test. So in this case, we have, um, because we recently landed uh, IndexedDB based um, optimization in terms of cache for uh, packages. And whenever you have a list of packages, a long list of packages, we can uh, freeze those dependencies, especially if you have pin dependencies. Uh, we want to be able to freeze those pin dependencies and guarantee you that next time you will load exactly the, the, the very same dependencies you had declared in your packages. Um, and that's it. So this page is just doing the, exactly the same thing because we know that if you refresh after the first load, um, you're going to have just those dependencies working the way you started. And so in this case, it was just await page reload. So this merge request was about encouraging myself or anyone else in the future to write um, cache dependent uh, or refresh dependent behaviors to, 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 to take a hint is like, is really that easy. And I'm, I'm using the same expectations all over. So maybe I shouldn't repeat this code. Maybe I should do a better job at this. Um, but at the same time, it's just what I want to test and it's working and it's saying, Hey, if you load the first time, which is every new playwright, uh, browser tab or whatever it's like a fresh new browser um, you're sure that it's gonna download the universe uh, and eventually store it but to check that that was eventually stored you can just reload and be sure that the browser that tab that that playwright tab or window is gonna use whatever cache you had before until you close it and so that's it that's that that's basically the topic and the other one was uh um yeah was about the fact that we we we, we now allow uh maybe this should have been an announcement but we now allow if you explicitly set an index urls in your in your um config so index urls equal either a string or a list of strings then you can have uh, an index url and you can load fancy stuff from fancy endpoints. So in this case, we are just using test.pypy.org slash simple for a test foo, which is a basic test foo exam. I, I don't even know what that is. All I know is that this page works and the test I've shown before, it demonstrates that it works repeatedly. So even if you cache it as a log filed um, micro pip thing, you eventually refresh your browser, you already have all that thing working for you and it always passes the test. And that's it. Awesome. So that will mean that if you are, say for instance, working in a company who have their own Python package index for their internal builds of their particular things, you can now use uh, PyScript to point at that rather than PyPI, which yeah. is what it defaulted to. Exactly. Fantastic. Fantastic. So that was the use that was, that, yeah, yeah I, I, Fabio, I think you and I, we were in a conversation with somebody who was like, if this happens, mana from heaven, I'm sold. So. Well, yeah, they even, well, there is, I, we probably already closed it, but one of the contributions doing PyCon was this. Like yeah. there was a, even a PR that wasn't that, that was the, one the that right time and the right approach, etc. So yeah. this is great. And actually, this is this probably should be another additional item. We really need to find a way to basically broadcast those new new features. You know, even just having a regular Twitter blast or you know a regular multiple blast Discord, Twitter, whatever. Yeah. Uh, so Which that we're like, hey, will be. yeah, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We're, we're, we're on it. <laughs> I'm in resources. That, it's always yeah, exactly, about money. Exactly. It's our ever increasing to do list. <laughs> OK, so what's next? Next is me. When demo. All oh, right. OK, so uh, I am just going to uh, share my screen and um Show you some code. Okay, I want to move that over there and that over here and uh, share my screen. And it's going to be screen one. Okay. So, 
So, uh, we have in test when, um, uh, so, uh, this is, uh, a kind of status update of the work that's been going on with the at when decorator, uh, for those watching at home who've never seen the conversation about this, uh, we're using at when, uh, at when, I think, Fabio, you added it in the very first version of PyScript that was like launched when Peter did it, Keynote, or very but, close yeah. after that. My brain is too blurry. It's probably a mix between me and Martin. Well, the important thing is, is that uh, at the when decorator allows people to specify when a function should be called. When something happens, then you call this function. Okay, and so um, so we have uh, you know um, a whole bunch of tests about that, uh, and um, we uh, have been talking about how do we. Uh, Rather than just talking about um, events coming from the DOM, how do we handle asynchronous events coming from, for instance, the web APIs built into the browser? Because that's the thing that we want to focus on. Um, and so we came up with this notion of a kind of a, an abstract whenable uh, thing. Um, and people said they actually also wanted when to work as a function as well, because they wanted to be able to attach it dynamically rather than just on the decoration of a function as well, because they might create a, a button and then say when this button is clicked, use this handler, and so on and so forth. So we've got a couple of tests for that. Um, so when something that's winnable uh, happens, do a handler, and then we trigger that winnable with a message, and the count goes up. Um, and we can also say when some winnable, you have this this handler as well. Um, and, and then I started looking at, 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 at web.py, um, and thank you as well, uh, to, to Martin for helping with this. Uh, so um, using the on pattern from JavaScript, uh, you can now uh, do things like um, when, um, actually, uh, where is it? Uh, so uh, this is within an uh, element collection. So uh, when, um, when all these buttons, uh, you know, I'm attaching basically an on click uh, to, um, to this function here. So that also means that you could do something like uh, this. Um, um, so use a, a CSS selector to return uh, an element uh, collection um, and work like that with, um, with the when decorator as well. Uh, but it also means that we can do things like um, uh, let me just try and find it. Uh, test when decorator. So we've kind of click just a button, so that works, okay. But we have uh, uh, this as well, another button on click um, as well. Uh, so we're able to use the on something, whatever the something is for that particular type of event there as well. Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, and Martin, I don't know, uh, maybe after I've finished talking, you might want to uh, show us your tarantulas demo, uh, seeing as it's Halloween, yeah. um, and, uh, and show us how that works. Um, so the problem is, as you can see, uh, I've got a failing test suite, and I've been kind of finding with the test suite a bit. And uh, when refactoring when, uh, I've moved it into events now, because we have up here now um okay this is just a utility function because micropython and pyodide uh uh determine what's awaitable in a different way so that allows us to abstract that away and then we have this notion of an event okay which represents something that may happen at some point in time like on click or something like that or i've heard a sound if we're looking at speech to text for instance um, and you trigger those with a result, okay? And then for every uh, listener that's been added to that event, uh, if it's awaitable, it awaits it. Otherwise, it calls it, okay? This is event handling 101, okay? And you can add a listener and you can remove a listener as well. And then with when, uh, we do a whole bunch of stuff with the uh, uh, getting the optional 
a handler if it's being called as a function. Uh, and then we also try and find the elements if it's being um, called in the old way uh, with the selector. And then here's the bit that uh, <laughs> that I'm having fun with at the moment. Um, we did have a version of this code that wrapped it uh, so that you could um, call, uh, pass in the function and it, it might not have an argument, okay? Right now, uh, of course, um, it's all, everything's being called um, uh, with uh, the... Um, with the result, okay. But if you don't, if you just want to pass in a function that doesn't take a result, uh, uh, because you're never going to use that result, um, that was what the old uh, decorator did. Um, but I've been fighting that and the unit test suite uh, today, and so the stage at which you find me is I got to the point where uh, I kind of flipped the table and went, oh man. I'm going to start from the simplest possible thing and then just try and build it up again. Um, and uh, so that's kind of what you're looking at here. But here's the fun thing. Uh, uh, Fabio, I see your hand. Uh, this is the last thing I'm going to say about this. Um, it turns out that when you add event listener with a create proxy in Pyodide, that's not idempotent. In MicroPython, it is. So that means that when you do a test that is a little bit like, uh, bah, 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 bah. Oh, where's it gone? Oh, if I can have it. Just a moment ago. I can explain that. Yeah. Okay. Here it is. Yeah. So we've got, um, oh man. Yeah. Go on. Yeah. It's this. Okay. In MicroPython, you should only get one result back. In CPython, Pyodide, it gets added twice. So, okay, I'm hoping, yeah, Andre, tell me. What's yeah, going no, on here? Fabio first. Okay, Fabio Fab first. I'm just wondering, because you're well, answering my it, technical thing, and then Fabio can talk. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, if it's a, it's a technical yeah. quick, like that's, yeah, go, Andre. Yeah, go for it, Andre. Uh, not necessarily quick, <laughs> but that's fine. So, two things. Uh, first one is um, just um, a feature request. So the the first one is that the first thing I notice is that you do when select or whatever dot on click, and then the definition of the function is Pythonic on underscore click. So how difficult would that be to have a when dot on underscore click and you have the definition after that is reflecting exactly what what, what you what you meant. So you know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> look at all this, all these smiles. Yeah, yeah I'm I'm glad you're bringing up one of the things that was in my one of the rocks in my shoe. Uh, great. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's important to, this is a straw man. Okay, this is why I'm explaining it is so that we can get this feedback and we can refine and discuss and things. Yeah. Now, I'm, as a reader of your code, I, I yeah. was just wondering, you have a, a discrepancy already in the, the on click. I'll, I'll answer a, that a if you want. Thing. And uh, that's it, on it, underscore click. It, right after in and the javascript world though you have without an underscore on click on this on that on the other and so and thank you for explaining me how it works yeah yeah no that. no no but but we're trying so we i thought it's for the sake of folks at home you pudding so I, i'm uh, saying <laughs> what, 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 why not boss why not boss because uh, okay you, you, yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Guys, anyway, we're getting bogged down aren't we so <laughs> yes I think it's there are two aspects here. the The fact that JavaScript does it doesn't mean we need to do it, right? And in the JavaScript case, it's actually slightly different. It's closer to what Andrea is saying because, uh, you know, it's own click on something. In this case, reads weirdly. Like it would read nicely if it was when uh, button dot is clicked or something like this, right? The on click is is referring to the object in the, in the JavaScript side. In our side, it refers to the when decorator, yeah. right? So it's just yeah. semantics. I like, I like, yeah, okay, I like the is. 
bit. That sounds that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that that's a vote, I, or do you want to say something, Martin? <laughs> yeah, no, I was just going to say yes. That that's what we talked about yesterday, right? I said it reads weird with the on. It doesn't read like ev- everything else. Like when something happens, when an on click. The, well, there's not an on click thing. On click yeah. is what they use. But just just for everyone to know, we can choose that prefix. But the yeah. reason that there is a prefix is so that we can do the magic of get at her right which is if if the if the attribute doesn't exist so we basically it's just a cheap and cheerful if it has the on prefix but obviously we could put whatever that but it but we would have yeah. to do a prefix right it would is be slightly something or yeah yes, or is underscores so yes something that we know yeah but yeah i totally agree with the on the on just reads reads really badly yeah yeah okay yeah, the cool. second thing is, was the technical one yeah. is that uh, i think that when you create create proxy, it, it's always a new object. I, so I, I, I know, yes. You, can't, exactly, yeah. you cannot use... I, I actually have to double check, but I think you cannot use the same listener to, to add and remove it because it doesn't return the same, the same reference, which yeah. is shield, I think. Uh, that that might be an upstream uh, thing to to tackle, but I wish Hood was here. But uh, at the same time, I I think it's with, with MicroPython when they create a when it creates a proxy is and for for reference is always the same. same so yes, exactly. That, that's the reason you have a discrepancy in, in there too. I, oh, I, I know. That's it. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. All I, I know, know, I know why, do. but the the what, yeah. yeah, it's it's for that reason. But what I want to try and do is figure out well what do we do about it though uh it's it's why okay i can i can, I can help in there but uh asynchronously not not yeah, right yeah, now yeah, yeah exactly martin but, you were going to um make yeah that well that one's interesting right never mind about the technical level yeah. it's like when you showed that test right and you said oh i would expect pyodide's gonna call this once pyodide's gonna uh, the other one's gonna call it twice it's or something right around, but yes it's that. but yeah, yeah. yeah I, right, right. But to me that's actually like that's um, never mind the technicalities what the intention of that would be is it is the more interesting thing because yeah. to me if i actually accidentally decorate it twice part of me says it's perfectly legitimate for you to call it twice well it's like, here's the thing. It, 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 javascript it, if you add the event listener twice you only get it once it's idempotent so it's it, 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 it's the same reference yes. if it's, it's the same handler reference. right yeah yeah if you put it but but to me that's yeah, I, that, again it's like what the meaning of that is 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 ambiguous to me. I'm yeah. not sure which one I would want. If JavaScript could do it one way, that's fine, right? But to me, I'm still like, yeah. If I did that, what am I? No, you probably never want the same listener, the same, the exact same listener to trigger twice because it, it's gonna it's gonna lead to errors. Uh, I, 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 I yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, it's, can it's, sign it's, it. it. It's just same listener twice is a mistake because you can. You can import a listener from a library and you think you you want to be triggered by the listener twice no <laughs> that that that's never the case so the listener if you define it is going to be your own the listener if you import it from another library you don't you never want the listener to trigger twice otherwise it's going to be a mess out of just resolution re, re, resolving the listeners and triggering the listeners when when, when it when, when when it happens because all you need in your logic around the listener is needed once for yeah. that single listener you never want that single listener to trigger your logic twice because it, it's it's a foot gun it's a known foot gun in the javascript yeah. yes. so, 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 yes. uh, so fabio's had his hand up very very patiently and no, yes, that... he's supposed to be interrupting me from like 20 minutes ago so fabio uh please no that's cool uh like so i, I still want to chime in on the yeah. two, two quick things i had earlier but to answer the just to try and move us ahead because i think we're getting into the details yeah. i think the algorithm for those type of scenarios where we're basically we're victims of the uh, implementation details of the interpreters that we are using yes. right so i think the the kind of uh algorithm is can we do a quick fix no cool let's cover in the docs highlight that and then try to bubble up with the uh, you know upstream and and work with the 
interpreters. That, that, that's what I was going to suggest, Fabio, but I was too frightened to because I thought everybody else would go, oh, no, we can fix well, this. <laughs> I'm like, yes, no, just well, actually, I was going to comment. Our responsibility, though. You know, it's there. I was going to comment. I, the risk is uh, Andrea Yoda tomorrow morning comes with, <laughs> by the way, I couldn't sleep last night, so this thing was bothering me, and I have a solution. Uh, <laughs> Now, Which... unfortunately, when it comes to Python code, there's no weak reference, so you 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 can't really fix that because I wouldn't know where to say, okay, PyoDad, this is the time you can dispose this thing, and I cannot say, okay, PyoDad, this is the time this thing was known already. So you can create function, create proxy, sorry, um, and you can keep creating, and I can keep track. Or what you're trying to create and if it's the same reference i can say you already did that here your create proxy so you have um f first in <laughs> first out a sort of logic but i don't know i wouldn't know when that proxy can be destroyed which is the main thing that uh, uh i wouldn't say bother but is is the main concern in terms of pyodide so when pyodide says you use create proxy pyodide expect you to destroy that proxy at some point and when you explicitly say create proxy pyodide says okay is a proxy for you, Martin, because you expect multiple times the same callback to be the, a different proxy. But how do you remove that listener? And so that mapping is um, is something I need to really dig into because it's not it's, it's, it's not trivial, and and I wouldn't know in 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 Python code how to do that because you need a hook into the garbage collector somehow to say okay this proxy can go and uh, we don't care anymore otherwise it's gonna be forever pending proxies which is probably <laughs> um i'm speculating but probably is what micropython is doing so in micropython when you create a proxy if the proxy is already a proxy or known as a as a function it returns always the same strings but micropython probably doesn't know when to remove it or probably does but if it does uh, i need to check the code <laughs> to be sure that's the case yeah okay sorry it's about memory uh, management uh, yeah yeah, yeah. 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 So, <laughs> so so the current state anyway is um yeah i, I, I i'm still working on that um uh, <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. but the interesting thing though is that uh, because I sorry, sorry, sorry just quickly. What yeah. I could do is to propose a way for both of them to um, erase stuff when the JavaScript garbage collector says, "Okay, this is not needed anymore." Um, but that would be uh, quite some effort as a as a merge request for completely different projects, and probably MicroPython is already doing that. And so, yeah, that that, that that's all I can contribute about this yeah. topic yeah Sorry. so, so to, to to go back um so uh like i said the state of the code is uh you have to pass you, you have the handler function has to have an argument okay the original when had a workaround that allowed you to supply a handler function without that the the code that you saw was me throwing away a whole bunch of complexity so that I could work with the simplest possible things and then build that back up. And this is when I kind of like found this discrepancy there as well. So, um, yes, uh, Fabio. So it's a work in progress. So, okay. Yes. So you just added on the third question. So it should it, it, all of them should be quick. So does that mean you're proposing that when we launch this, we have a um, breaking change, or you're just saying, this is it for now. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying I'm to work up. I'm in the middle of, yeah, exactly. Okay. That's it. I yeah, don't want to break it. the, because, uh, you know, uh, as Martin Makes keeps sense. pointing out to me, my IDE is going to complain at me unless I put no QA next to it, and I don't want to do that. So just for, for, for Martin's mental health, uh, we should <laughs> yes. keep yeah, that yeah. in there. <laughs> Uh, Andrea, is your is your hand for this specific thing or yes? Can I, I mean, okay. we never had a way to remove listeners right now. 
the WAN was always uh, forever adding things and we never thought or discussed about removing things. So you I don't now. think that there could be a possibly yeah. breaking change right now, um, but we need to do the right thing. That's yeah. for sure. But so if, yeah. the, if the underlying object that is being WEND is a is an event uh, class, there is a, a, you know, add listener, remove listener. So if you've got a reference to that, you know, as I've called it, say, with the uh, uh, HTML elements uh, in PyScript.web, uh, you know, on click is an event instance. So you can add handlers to it or you can remove handlers from it. Um, yeah. You mean the reference when, with the winnable? Yes, uh, to the winnable yeah, object. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Perfect. So the yeah. winnable object allows you to do that, but that's something new. So we're not actually breaking how everything else used to work. Yeah, yes, yeah. That's still the same. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, that leads me. Yes, <laughs> oh, no. that leads to the next point, which is the winnable. Can you go back to the winnable uh, definition that we had? I think I I, I missed that. Uh, I was just curious on the example. Uh, so we no longer. Uh, yeah. Okay. Hang on a second. Sorry, I'm kind of faffing about with Discord. Can you see my screen? Yep. Yeah. Okay, so uh, in in uh, in here, so the the event is the thing that is uh, when that when understands. Um, yeah, yeah, but go to the example that you showed that was like calling winnable. Oh right, okay, like uh, on the test, I think it was the test. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, here. So this is a uh, oh yeah, yeah. It's okay an so event. it's just even I, tri I, tri I trigger it and then the counter goes up because i've incremented it and i assert that the result is the result that was sent here uh, so yeah this can be any arbitrary result okay but i so, think yeah, but, so here's the thing if martin were to show you his let's do the yeah uh, you'll you'll see what what we're talking about do you want to martin if I once I figured out how to stop streaming, there we go. Uh, uh, do you want to show us the tarantulas? Yep. So here's the speech synthesis app. Um, just change. So again, like the point of the when, as we all know, right, is to have a consistent API for the users. So instead of just using when for DOM events, that we can use it for all kinds of things that are asynchronous with callbacks and what have you so in this example there's a few places that are asynchronous obviously getting my location even getting this list of possible voices happens asynchronously in the browser and then obviously when you speak and repeat it while you're doing the transcription that's all asynchronous so i've got some uh, written some just kind of demo geo and speech uh, um, libraries um, and then this just uses PyScript.web to build it. Then I start watching the position. So then I can say when geo position changed, then I update the position. And I was just messing around doing maps, but that's not in yet. So basically it just tells you what your location is. Um, and then in Martin, the same can way. You go, can you go up to the geo definition? Okay. So yeah. So then geo, it, the way that geo go. works is that it just defines some events. It's got these events. And then at some point when something happens, like when the position changes, then I just say, oh, position change dot trigger, and I pass in the position. So I define the events that my library is going to take, uh, going to emit, right? OK, so the idea is that for the known objects, we already pre-build them for you, right? Yes, but yes. Is clicked or blah blah blah. blah. Yes. Yeah. And, and 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 the way that works right now is um, that just by so so if I scroll down right so basically my th so this allows me to do my custom Python code right so I've got position changed or I've got when the voices have changed so the voices have been loaded then I can add an option for each voice to the select and then when there's a recognition result so if I click this hey testing testing. Hey, testing, testing. Right, so when I get a speech recognition result, it says display, say, the transcript. That never gets on and... Martin, by the way. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and then, yeah, and then this is how it, in the old, in the old, in the current way, right, we would say, um, we would have had to say at when change on the hashtag voice. 
select. This is the old, this is the current way that we would do that. But what we're saying is we can make this consistent even in this by, I can actually just use page selector and then on change. And obviously this could be on change or, or, or something, but or something. Yeah. Yeah, or, or it has changed or is changed because, you know, the only downside of this magic is right. That we have to have a prefix because we have to know whether or not it's actually an attribute on your element or whether it's um, you really are want to um, you, you really you really want to you know hook up an event listener so that that was why this this was kind of a sneaky bit of magic no matter what yeah. we call it right it's like we can't call it that because that could clash with an attribute a property on a dom element right and we're just going oh you there is no there is nothing called on change so we'll we'll give you an event when you ask for this thing right so that so i mean we you know we yeah i don't know but but that, that's the um that's how it's currently working here right so, so, so the idea, and the, so again, the idea was fundamentally, it was not about technical ideas as such. It was about a idea that can we make the the idea of when something happens, do this consistent across our Python APIs or and our web APIs and our DOM APIs, as such that the user has this simple notion: when this happens, do this; when this happens, do that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So that's that would that's the that's that example right there. And and so yeah. and originally, right, we had the idea of implementing this um with a protocol, right? So instead of checking for a subclass, where do I stop streaming then? So so right now we've got a simpler version which says, oh, the the when the, the code for the when decorator knows about the event class explicitly right the original version i think based on what andrea said had this idea of a when protocol which actually was interesting because that allowed me and when my example code to build both the event way of doing things and another way of doing things which was to ba basically choose how what the when the arguments of the when right i could choose what they meant i could make a python object look like the old school dom objects right so the when protocol idea to me is more powerful we would have then said well in our apis we are like, we're going to use the when protocol like this to basically mimic to, to do exactly what we've just de demonstrated to you right but the when protocol gives you more power than saying we, is this a hard-coded class so we could we could even still do that right we could make the event class implement the when protocol and then the check inside the when decorator checks for the when protocol again like it did but that's up to it like i don't know whether that could be a you ain't going to need it but I, the, the notion of the when protocol feels really powerful to me andre i i don't have a strong opinion about when protocol versus event like uh, nicholas is suggesting <laughs> i'm just thinking we shouldn't delegate to users the recognition of the winnable. So it's like the easiest way they can get whatever they want, the better. Because if you have to spread the WEM protocol and every WEM protocol should check if the first argument is a string or something else, probably that's not the best wait, DX wait, wait. I would expect. Or, uh, or, or, what, or I'm, what, what I'm saying is take... The like so for me i think the when protocol should almost be like a python standard library extension right because the, the when protocol is very clever like that like the way that it, it opens up a lot of things and then for us yeah. we say no 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 by the way inside pyscript we use event and then an end user like me as an end user in of pyscript i would never have to implement dunder when because hmm. i wouldn't i just cool. wouldn't care right right so okay. i would just use i would still use our event and carry on using pyscript but it just feels like the notion of when that dunder when protocol is really powerful for other things but we would just use all ours the same i would still it would as a user of pyscript it would look exactly like my example now right i'd never have to do anything differently so so, so here's, here the, 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 here's i mean i i suggested the dunder when protocol 
and uh, I, I felt very pleased with myself and, uh, you know, uh, very clever. But, you know, such is uh, the hubris of, uh, of humanity uh, in that I looked at it and thought, well, in order to be able to implement Dunder when you need to understand how Python protocols work and Dunder methods and things like that. Whereas uh, and that is well, it's not an adv- it's not hard to understand, but it's a kind of you need to be most people who do that are experienced Pythonistas because they understand under the hood how python is working okay um whereas most people and and this is speaking to peters for the 99 percent and we're talking about you know people who are data scientists astronomers folks who are using python not because they're software engineers but because they just want to get their stuff done okay the notion of instantiate an event to represent when something might happen and then when you trigger it uh, and the event kind of like takes care of it feels to me like something that uh, is more understandable and easy to explain than the dunder when protocol if you see what i mean but but here's the thing i agree with you martin is that it feels like dunder when is a very powerful thing but it's in the wrong part of the stack if we're implementing it because it should probably as a protocol uh, be somewhere else be somewhere be be in python itself um but my point was right like i said was even if we had the dunder when protocol a PyScript user would never see it, like a data scientist, an astronomer, a thing, because they would use event. We would, we would impl- like the original version that I had for yeah. this example, right, was because because I was just using the built version that, of PyScript that had the Dunder when yeah. in. I, I built event using Dunder when, yeah, and 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 so as an end user would never see. But again, right now we could just say, do you know what? It's Yagni. Yeah, we don't I, need I was it. say Occam's yeah. razor. I mean, you don't need it because you could do the whole thing with just the event class, which is kind of what I did in the example. But anyway, Fabio, the, the, whole, point, yeah, yeah. The, the whole point there is that they're not mutually exclusive. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so you, like, right. I, I do think we should roll out the simpler version right now. It actually gets a nice abstraction. Uh, I would argue even this version, there's a little step for the standard user to actually understand, well, event is just a generic event. And then you implement the trigger, basically, uh, that you hit triggered base, basically on the cus- custom yes. things that happen in the browser or, ev- or object and stuff like this. So I would, I would say there's already like a step, a higher uh uh, ah, a higher learning curve. Uh, at any time, we can re-implement the event with the when that uh, protocol. Uh, if anything, what I would do is actually, I would keep that proposal documented somewhere in discussions or somewhere else, so that we can come back and not forget ev- like half of it in six months or a year. But I, I really think that this is the right direction. Um, it's it's really nice and clean. Yeah. Yeah. What are the Last thing I had, uh, just because of a time. From 40 really. minutes ago, yes. <laughs> yes, I think that I, last thing I had for 40 minutes ago, which is like just a comment. The, you mentioned uh, the, you can use, you needed to change also because some use cases would, instead of using that creator, you wanted to just call the function yes. with uh, the on, when function. On a, on a dynamically created Button on a dynamically created, yeah. yes, yes, but but that is just decorators by nature. Decorators are just functions with syntax, syntactic, uh, syntactic sugar. Um, yeah, yeah, I just but anyway. I wanted to call that out explicitly that you, you okay. can do that because we were talking to uh, Xeon22, one of our users, about this. He was taking part in the discussion over on GitHub and he mentioned that he had that particular use case. And so, we've also made it so oh. that when you're using uh, PyScript.web elements and you're um creating the dom declaratively so i your code is the tree uh we've made it so that you can pass in on click or whatever we end up calling those things equals a reference to a function so you know it, it, it's yes. all gets joined up together like that i would actually suggest we add an example because that was a source of confusion yeah months and months or years ago around decorating class uh methods versus instance methods yeah. and you you cannot decorate you should call the fun the when as a function on the instance yes. uh yeah. and we should put it in the docs probably yeah. or faq I or something I, I mean this is like i said this is the straw man version and we're still refining and working and uh reducing it and then building it back up and all of those other good stuff but once we've got that there's going to be a whole bunch of 
documentation writing that we need to get in place so that folks feel comfortable with it and uh, they can help us build out that API that we that we need. Um, I'm conscious of the fact that we're, <laughs> we're almost up and uh, we've got two items left. Um, uh, but uh, I, I mean, is there anybody, does anybody else want to say any more on the when stuff? I mean, this has been a really fascinating uh, discussion and this is why i love working with you folks is because we have these discussions and i know that i can trust you if i bring any work or if any of us brings work we can uh very consciously and conscientiously add constructive criticism and, and things like that so this is this is how we do engineering this is how to do it so uh, i'd just like to call that out and say thank you for that as well um Okay, uh, it looks like nobody else has anything more to say. So, uh, Fabio, you've got two more. Docs, translations, and helping new contributors identify easy, categorized tasks. Yeah, I, I would suggest we can just roll over to the next meeting. Okay. Uh, they're not pressing. Okay, okay, cool. Well, with that, uh, I think uh, I call the meeting closed. I'm just going to stop the recording now.